Okay, so always, like usual, starting with the horizontal asymptote. Okay, now I go ahead and pair horizontal and slant together because remember, if you have a horizontal asymptote, you're not going to have a slant asymptote. And if you don't have a horizontal asymptote, you have the potential to have a slant asymptote. So I just kind of put those together um, to hopefully reduce some confusion. What are we looking for with horizontal asymptotes? Remember, we check the degrees. Okay, the largest exponent on the top and the bottom. In this case, they're both squared. So we do the ratio of the leading coefficients. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 thirds. Now I'm going to save all the graphing stuff for the end um, because you may want to kind of adjust your scale a little bit. We'll see. All right. <clears throat> Next, we need to factor because we need to find holes and vertical asymptotes. So the numerator has a GCF of 2. I'm going to take that out. We're left with x squared minus x minus 6. The denominator has a GCF of 3, which leaves us with x squared minus 4. Both numerator and denominator will factor further. The numerator is 2 times x minus 3 times x plus 2. Negative 3 times positive 2 multiplies to give us negative 6 and adds to give us negative 1. The denominator is the difference of perfect squares, so that is x plus 2 times x minus 2. <clears throat> so we have a common factor of x plus 2 in the top and in the bottom. So the x coordinate is negative 2. To find the y coordinate, we plug negative 2 into the simplified version. So we're left with 2 times x minus 3 in the top and 3 times x minus 2 in the bottom. So negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So we have uh, negative 10 over negative 12, which simplifies to 5 over 6. So our hole is the point negative 2, positive 5 over 6. Okay. Vertical asymptote, we take what's left in the denominator and set it equal to 0. 3 does not equal 0, so we don't have to worry about the GCF part. x minus 2 is equal to 0. That says we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. We good so far? I don't want to go too fast. Okay, kind of new here, the x-intercept. The x-intercept means you're on the x-axis. On the x-axis, y is 0. That means that the function is equal to 0. The only way a fraction will equal 0 is if the numerator equals 0. So you take the simplified numerator, 2 times x minus 3, and set that equal to 0. Well, 2 does not equal 0, so that doesn't matter x minus 3 says that 3 is our x-intercept. Now, it is a point, so go ahead and write it as a point. Its y-coordinate is 0. It's always 0. It's what makes it the x-intercept. For the y-intercept, you plug in 0 into the function. Now, you've got a little bit of a choice here. You can either plug it into the original, or you can plug it into the simplified version. Um, an advantage to plugging it into the original is that if we plug in 0 for x, um, the first two terms in the numerator are 0, so we're just left with the negative 12. And in the denominator, when we plug in 0 for x, 3x squared is 0, so we've just got negative 12. So that gives us 1. So our y-intercept is 0, 1. The same thing would have happened with the simplified version over here. 
uh, you would have just had to do some multiplying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because if you are on the x-axis, your y-coordinate is always zero. Yes, ma'am? Plug in zero either into the very original problem or into your simplified version. Either, mm -hmm, yeah, plugging in zero for x. Yep. Either way, you'll get the same thing. If you plug it in the simplified version, you're going to get negative 6 over negative 6, which still reduces to 1. Okay? Uh, no, you don't always have a GCF. No. And it is possible to have more than one x-intercept. I'm pretty sure I have, a, I have an example uh, like that. I tried to kind of cover all the bases with the examples. Okay. Um, now, as far as the extra points, I kind of want to uh, put what we've got on there so far. Um, but personally, since we've got some fractions here, we've got the two-thirds and the five-sixths and whatnot, um, I'm going to kind of change the scale on my graph. So I'm going to let every two blocks be one unit. Um, you can do that or not, whatever you prefer. Um, it's just going to help your graph not be quite so crammed. Okay, um, You can do that. Okay, I know it's been a long time since y'all have had to graph stuff by hand, but you can change the scale uh, to make things a little bit easier. Okay. Okay, so my horizontal asymptote at two-thirds, in this case, would be about right here since I changed my scale. My hole at negative two, positive five-sixths, well, five-sixths is greater than two-thirds. Now, other than just typing it in my calculator to compare the decimals, um, the reason why I know that is because if I made two-thirds something over six, it would be, what, four-sixths? Okay, so five-sixths is greater than that. So your whole is actually right above the horizontal asymptote there. Mine's still kind of crammed, but yours might be... A little bit better. It's hard with this pen too. Okay, vertical asymptote at x equals positive 2. Okay, remember these are dashed lines. Okay, make sure that you are not drawing solid lines. Make sure they are dashed lines. My x-intercept is 3. My y-intercept is 1. So, as far as extra points go, I need to know what else is happening with this graph. Okay, I know what a few of the points are, but I need to know um, what's going on down here um, on the far left side of my graph. How am I behaving around that horizontal asymptote? What's happening as I get close to my vertical asymptote from both sides? Um, and what's happening on the far right side of my graph? So, what have you graphed already? I've graphed, I've graphed what we've got the horizontal asymptote, I graphed the hole, I graphed the vertical asymptote, the x intercept, and the y intercept. Dot. Dot. Yeah, dot, yeah, you put points for the intercepts. Point for the intercepts and open circle for the hole. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so like I said, I want to find out what's happening to the far left of my graph without touching my calculator. Um, so as far as extra points, um, and a lot of people like to kind of arrange it in a table, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little XY table here. 
Um, I'm going to find the y value for negative 5. Um, I'm going to do the y value, and this is not an exact science, but I'm trying to describe how I'm coming up with these values. I would do the y value for positive 1 because there's kind of a break there between the y intercept and the vertical asymptote. And I'm pretty much, I mean, they're not totally random, but somewhat, yes. Okay. I'm also going to do 3 halves. Okay, 1.5, um, just so that I get a little bit closer to my vertical asymptote to see what's going on. Uh, same thing over here. I want to know what's going on between 2 and 3. So I'm going to do 5 halves or 2.5. I prefer fractions. Um, and I'm also going to do positive 5 because um, I want to know what's happening on that end. Now, for the sake of time, I know that I said I was going to do this without touching my calculator, but the most efficient way to plug in these values really is to put the equation in y equals and then go to the table, okay? Um, that's the most efficient way to plug in this many points. So that's what I'm going to do. You could plug them in one at a time um, and find out what their y value is, but this is the most efficient way to do it. So plug in the original. Make sure that the entire numerator is in parentheses. Divided by, put the entire denominator in parentheses. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the table. I'm not going to look at anything else just yet. I'm going to go straight to the table. And I'm going to get the value for negative 5. It is 0 0.7619. Uh, positive 1 is 1.333. I'm going to have to do something else to get the 3 halves and the 5 halves. But I can go ahead and get the 5.444. Okay. While I'm at it, I might as well check some things. Let me make sure that I have my y-intercept correct. When x is 0, y is 1. Uh, make sure the x-intercept's correct. I said that it was 3, 0. It is. Okay. Um, there's my vertical asymptote, the error at 2. And we also have an error at negative 2. Um, so those are our vertical asymptote and our hole. Now, uh, what about for 3 halves and 5 halves? Well, there are a couple of different ways that you can do it. Um, I think the easiest way to do it is to go ahead and go to the graph and you can kind of see there what the shape is supposed to look like. And there's, you can go to second trace, your calculate menu where you find minimums and maximums. Well, the first option there is value. And when you press enter, it takes you to the graph and it says x equals. Well, type in your x value, 3 over 2. And when you press enter, it'll give you the y value. The y value is 2. And it, as long as you don't press clear or anything, you can just type in another one. Okay, 2.5. And it'll give you that y value. You can, you can do that as much as you want to. And it'll keep on spitting out values for you. Okay? Second trace, it's the very first option, value. Okay? So now we can fill in these points on our uh, graph here. Negative 5.76 is slightly greater than 2 thirds. Okay, 2 thirds is 0.67, so kind of cram that in there. Um, 1 is 1 1.3, so that's about here. Yeah, I'm just plotting points. So yeah, they're solid, solid dots. 1 half, 2. 5 halves is negative 0.67, so about right there. And what was 5? 0.44. Okay, and I just saw what the graph looked like. So at this point, I've got enough, enough points. I can fill in my graph. Essentially, I'm just going to connect the dots. Don't go through your hole. Okay, make sure you pick up your pencil.